What is happening investors? It is your boy Jack. I am not a financial advisor and today we're making a video that I really didn't ever want to have to make because today or maybe tomorrow or maybe the next day I will be selling some of my airline stocks and I know this is probably coming as a big surprise to a lot of you because I am a big bull on airlines and I want it to be clear from the start. Everything I've said over the last few months in regards to airlines still 100% stands. I still absolutely love the industry in the long term. I love airlines, I love the companies I have decided to invest in, and I still do see fantastic long-term potential, but it is the short term that is scaring me to death. The valuations on these companies, specifically we'll speak about American Airlines, Delta Airlines, and Southwest Airlines, is just getting out of hand. There are so many new people trading and for whatever reason they all have decided that they love airlines. And the main reason I am now afraid of holding airlines is because of all these new investors who got in on the hype. We're going to be speaking about just how many new investors are in these airlines compared to where they were only three months ago later on in the video but it is abs it's mind blowing. I initially began to buy airlines because I saw an industry that was extremely beaten up. Delta was the first stock that ever really catched my eye and I think they will forever hold a very special place in my heart. The first time I bought Delta was at $35 and I dollar cost averages the whole way down. I bought at 30, at 25, I bought at 20, I bought all the way down and now my cost basis is $25 a share. My current positions in both Delta and Southwest are on the screen right now. Close to 11% of my total portfolio lies in these two companies that are in a sector that in the short term I think is going to struggle potentially more than ever. I mean my hope when initially getting into these companies was maybe 100 to 150% return in two to three years. We saw American Airlines go up nearly 100% in the span of a week. That is not right. That is not the way things should happen. So I'm gonna try make my thought process as clear as possible for you guys in this video. I know this is gonna be a shock to a lot of you, but can I please ask you to smash a like button? This video here, I contemplated making it, you know, you, it's kind of a swallow your pride moment because I have spoken about airlines so much. I have been a big bull on them and now I have to give the other side of the story. I have to swallow my pride and give you guys all the information. So please smash that like button. Of course, subscribe if you're new around here. We are on the road to 10,000 subs. We went up from 5,000 subs to 7,600 subs in the span of two weeks. If we could keep that rate of growth up, we would have 10,000 by the end of this month which would be insane considering my original goal was 10,000 by the end of July. And I'd also like you to drop me a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts on airline stocks. I know a lot of you guys are in them and I'm interested in knowing if you're buying more, if you're trimming positions or if you're getting out completely. So please do let me know. But now guys, there is a whole lot of information to get into this. So let's get straight into it. One of the very first things I want to show you is just how many brand new investors the airline stocks have gotten over the last few months. Now I want to start it off with American Airlines, because American Airlines has been absolutely crazy, okay? And if I just bring you back, this green line here is the amount of users on Robinhood who are holding a particular company, okay? And we can see that on the first day of this year, there was 10,730 people holding American Airlines at a price of very close to $30. Fast forward, okay? There are now close to 650,000 people holding American Airlines. That is a lot more people. Right here on the 17th of March is the first time that I decided to go ahead and pick up Delta. Now I never purchased American Airlines, but I did pick up Delta. So we can see when I first purchased, we were at about $35. I think it was closer to $33, okay? And there was 71,000 people holding. A month earlier, there was about 18,000 people holding. And at the start of the year, there was about 15,000 people holding. So I think this was quite understandable because Airlines got hit extremely, extremely hard at this period of time. If we go from Delta's highs to the 17th of March, when I first decided to buy, they were down very close to 50%. From the S&P 500's peak down to the 17th of March, they were only down 25%. So I saw an industry that was hit an awful lot harder than the average company was at the time. From the beginning, I've always said this, airline stocks are high risk. So the reason I'm selling is not just because the risk is still there. I've been fully aware of the risk from the very beginning. The main reason I'm selling is because of just how many new people are in the market. As I said, I got in here, there was about 70,000 people and now in Delta there's over 591,000 holders. And this is only on the Robinhood app, you know? And I would guarantee 
that an awful lot of these people don't really understand the risks associated with buying these companies. You might think I'm crazy, but let's have a look at Hertz, okay? A company who literally filed bankruptcy protection and bankruptcy. And when all of this started happening, the amount of people trading Hertz literally more than doubled. There are a lot of people out there who just buy stocks completely and utterly based off hype. And why this really worries me, okay? A lot of people would have started getting around here, you know, 300,000 people at the very bottom. We went up now, that has more than doubled. A lot of these people have made a decent portion of money. And now they may well be thinking to themselves, I have no idea what I bought, but I'm up 50%. I'll just sell. Especially when everything else starts to go down in price, these people are going to be so inclined to sell. So the main reason I am going to be selling some sort of my position is nothing to do with the airlines. It's nothing to do with the debt. It's nothing to do with the cash burn rate. It's nothing to do with the break even passenger loads. It is literally to do with people. It's more psychological than anything. Let's just have a look at this short piece very quickly, okay? While American Airlines stock has fallen more than 40% year to date, this has only reduced its market cap by around 5 billion. That's less than the amount of cash the company will burn through in 2020, even in a best case scenario. Thus, American Airlines stock is valued as if its prospects have actually improved since the beginning of this year, and they just haven't. For investors who are bullish about an airline recovery, better performing peers offer more upside with less risk, and this is what, to an extent, I am starting to realize. I think now is a good time to say that with me selling my airline stocks now, I still completely plan on buying more of them down the line at a better price, at a better cost basis. This is just a way of reducing risk. I mean, when a sector as high risk as airlines is taking up more than 10% of your portfolio, you have to think about it a little bit smarter. I fully believe that with the cost basis I have now, if I am to hold out, I will ultimately make money down the line. But I also think that in the short term, and the long term, I could make a lot more money if I sell and buy in at a later price. And I know I always preach, it's not about timing the market, it's about timing the market, but there are always exceptions. And one key understanding that has to be had is, I could sell and airlines could just shoot back up, the best news in the world could come out and I could miss out. And that is okay because that would be my decision made. This is speaking about American Airlines again. American Airlines have just given us the most information. They've been the most transparent as of late. That's why I think a lot of people are getting behind them. But I think what's happening with these guys is happening with all of the big guys. The massive rally in AAL stock on June 4th was sparked by a press release indicating that the carrier planned to restore 55% of its normal domestic schedule in July. That's up from just 20% to 25% in May. And this is a great piece of news. It's great for the airline industry as a whole. And under normal circumstances, I would have been so happy to see this. But just given the sheer amount of people in these airline stocks, the sheer amount of brand new investors in these airline stocks, this scares me more than gives me confidence. If this kind of news is all it takes to push a stock's price up over 100% in the span of just over a week, what news is going to push it back down over 50-60%? It's just too volatile. It makes no sense to me. And again, there is more good news. The airline disclosed that its load factor improved in the first eight days of June relative to May, even as it began to restore some capacity. Management also said that net bookings have been positive since mid-May across all parts of the booking curve. And of course, what we need to keep in mind, okay, is that a second potential wave of the pandemic could drive another downturn in air travel. And the odds of a second outbreak happening are honestly looking bad. News from this morning, a Beijing food market linked to 75 Roni cases. Beijing lockdown tightens as new Roni outbreak spreads. I'm also sure that everybody is aware of the horrific thing that happened with George Floyd in the US. And this has sparked worldwide outrage, and rightfully so, so rightfully so. I'm not gonna get too political or anything along those lines, but there are massive protests happening all over the world, and again, rightfully so. I am 100% behind these protests, but I think it would be silly and ignorant to not kind of, you know, regard the fact that this could lead to a bigger outbreak, not only in America, but absolutely everywhere, because these protests are going on all across the world. So now we're seeing new cases in China. We're seeing mass protests all across the world. It's scary, the thoughts of a second wave is scary. And the thoughts of a second wave doesn't mean that I'm gonna go ahead and sell absolutely every stock I own, that is not the case. But just the fact that airlines are already being so manipulated by so many new investors, if some bad news like this comes out, if anything in regards to a second wave is to come out, 
people will be afraid and people will sell. I didn't see it happening before, I honestly didn't, but now I could see new lows being made for many of these airlines within the next month or two, which is very scary. So what it all comes down to right now is me just having some sort of risk management in my portfolio as a whole. Now look, obviously I hope I'm wrong. I really, really, really hope I'm wrong and that these airlines can just keep going up higher and higher. That is obviously best case scenario. I just know that I will sleep better at night, trimming down my position to an extent, with the plan of buying in at a later date if I feel like the evaluation makes more sense. Because right now, nothing about these airlines makes sense to me in the short term. In the long term, everything I've said in future videos still stands. I do personally think the fundamentals are there. I do think the management teams in pretty much all of these major airlines are absolutely incredible. I do still see insane long-term potential. But the thing is, I see insane long-term potential in an awful lot of other companies who are much lower risk at the same time. Ooh, that was a fairly tough video to make, man. I'm, I'm probably one of the biggest bulls on airlines on YouTube, and here I am trimming my positions. Hopefully you guys can appreciate what I have to say, though. You can appreciate me trying my best to give both sides of the story. And again, I'm not a financial advisor. These are just my thoughts and opinions. It's just the way my head is working right now. What I'm speaking about right now may well never happen. They could just keep going up and up and up forever, and if they do, we're all gonna be very happy investors. I just think that there is a lot of negative news out there right now. So guys, if you did enjoy today's video, again, please smash that like button. It helps me out so, so much. Subscribe if you're new around here. Road to 10,000 is on, baby. I appreciate you all so much. Have a fantastic day. Peace.